नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम वेलकम टू द एडिटोरियल एज आई एम भुवन अपूर्व झा दिस इज द ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट ऑफ जुलाई एंड ओवर द कोर्स ऑफ द नेक्स्ट वन आवर वी विल टेक अ लुक एट अ लॉट ऑफ इम्पॉर्टेंट इन्फॉर्मेशन अ लॉट ऑफ इम्पॉर्टेंट आर्टिकल्स दैट यू आर टू बी अवेयर ऑफ फॉर टूडे ऑल राइट गुड मॉर्निंग दीपक गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन हु इज ज्वाइनिंग मी लाइव एंड अगेन दोज हु विल बी वॉचिंग दिस ओवर द कोर्स ऑफ द डे एंड देर आफ्टर थैंक यू फॉर योर पेट्रन एज आई होप यू कंसिडर लिविंग मी अ कॉमेंट and and the questions that will be following today i hope you take part in that because that is what we focus on here outcome based learning all right uh, so let's begin i'll i'll give you a brief 2 uh, minute introduction of what's on the agenda today okay good morning rajan kumar good morning lekam thank you so much guys for joining thank you thank you all right uh, so the first article that we're looking at is from the indian express okay it's on the explain page and a very important article okay like it's it's probably the most important article of the day across newspapers okay i do this since 3:30 in the morning i have had a look at major dailies major portals ma major environmental outlets all of that i have done and this is easily the most important article for for a civil service aspirant so we'll take a deep dive into that understand the difference between uh rule 267 rule 176 and adjournment motion all right now these are frequently used uh when the house is in uh, uh session you know you must be aware the monsoon session is currently underway yesterday was the first day so we will take a look at that thereafter we'll take a look at a pib article an article that appeared in the press information bureau again one of the primary sources for information from where most of the major outlets pick their information so we will go to the primary source we will look at the pib article on a particular variety of plants desiccation tolerant plant varieties that have been found in the western ghats so we will take a look at western ghats we will take a look at what are the dt plant varieties what is their application and and so in in the sense of climate change how can dt plants help us all right thereafter we'll take a look at an ancient ship building technique called the tankai method okay so again uh, this is in the news because of the indian navy and the ministry of culture having signed a memorandum of understanding okay that they are going to rejuvenate and revitalize this ancient ship building technique so we will take a look at this particular uh, ship building technique and uh, as always there are questions important questions and i hope you consider answering them because the first segment of this whole one hour session is where we uh, recognize those students who have taken the effort to go ahead and answer the questions of the previous day in the comment box under the video all right so we'll take a look at the questions first the answers and those individuals who are doing what is required the outcome based learning that is that we are focusing on all right so go ahead uh, this is my uh, telegram channel by the way so for those of you who are watching me for the first time or who have been watching me for a long time but haven't joined this telegram channel for whatever reason may i consider reconsider ask you to reconsider your decision you know go ahead look at the telegram channel it's going to be of use to you all right okay so this is the first question of yesterday's class first let's very quickly look at that okay uh, good morning bulbul arka how are you मैं एकदम बहुत बढ़िया आप कैसे हो प्रतीक गुड मॉर्निंग थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग ऑल राइट सो दिस इज द क्वेश्चन ऑफ यस्टरडे द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन पी एम के वी वाई कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स द फ्लैगशिप स्कीम ऑफ द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ लेबर एंड एम्प्लॉयमेंट अनफॉर्चुनेटली नॉट इट इज अंडर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ स्किल डेवलपमेंट एंड ऑनटरप्रोन्योरशिप ऑल राइट नो दिस इज द क्वेश्चन ऑफ द ट्वेंटी एटीन यू पी एस सी वाई द वे सो इन केस यू आर वंडरिंग वेर डिड आई पिक इट फ्रॉम All right. It among the other things imparts training in soft skills, entrepreneurship, financial and digital literacy. Absolutely correct. This is where it is working for uh, the capacity building, making sure that the training, the education, the skill development at the primary level is taken care of, and it also aims under the national skill qualification framework that larger guideline, that benchmark according to which you are rate, going to rate the skill of an individual. Okay. So which of the statements are correct? It says so. Two and three are correct. okay one is the incorrect one here let's look at the next question fiki an autonomous body under the ministry of skill development unfortunately no it is a private body okay it's a private consortium it's a private organization uh, it's a sort of a collective organization of the major business houses major industrialists industry participation is there and they provide recommendations which are again because it's a private body so uh, those recommendations again are only to be decided by uh the house or, or the government so this is incorrect the national skill development corporation is a not for profit public limited company absolutely correct we in fact did this yesterday so the correct statements here being two only 
All right. Let's look at the third question. Femtex, we discussed this extensively. Good morning, Monica. How are you? Umesh, thank you for joining. Arka, don't worry. Have a cup of tea. You know, you don't need to do much. Just pay attention. If you feel unwell, we'll, you can go ahead and look at the lecture later. All right. Don't worry. And you take care. All right. So what are Femtex? We discussed this yesterday. Femtex, again, are to do with uh, the devices, the technologies that help women navigate their health in an independent fashion. All right. So obviously, this is incorrect. This is incorrect. Two only. So now that we have discussed the answers for yesterday's class, let's look at those individuals who got this correct. All right. So we have Monica Thakur, Shubham Singla, Coder SD, Karuna Gautam and Asha Bist. Thank you so much. First again, for, once again, for these five individuals, for taking the effort to answer these questions, because that is going to help you. To the rest, may I request you? I have six very important questions today. Go ahead, answer them under the comment box below. And more importantly, focus on the outcome based learning as well as create a small memory for yourself. You know, it's important to give yourself small happinesses in a long process such as UPSC preparation. All right. So I hope you consider going and looking at the questions for today. Okay. So we'll begin with the first question. Asha, good morning. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Okay. So the first question rule 267, rule 176, and adjournment motion. Now, I have a small assignment for you. Today at 11 a.m., okay, at 11 a.m. IST, go ahead and look at the Sansad TV YouTube channel, okay. You are going to see whatever you learn right now in operation, in motion. At 11, the Rajya Sabha convenes. First, the chairman will come, address the house, welcome everyone, the initial order of business. Thereafter, he will say, okay, I am in receipt of, say, 10 or 15 notices under article 267 and then he will take the names of the members. Thereafter, most likely, he would go on to say that I am not admitting these notices under article 267. Thereafter, you will see suddenly the opposition will be up in arms. There will be ruckus in the house and within say 5 to 7, seven 10 minutes, the house gets adjourned for the day or till say 2 p.m., 1 p.m., whatever. I know this sequence because I have worked in that parliamentary system for good 8, 9, 10 years. So go ahead and look at it in motion today. Okay, Then you will understand what we are going to learn today. 11 a.m. on the Sunset TV YouTube channel. So now, rule 267. It relates to the suspension of the operative word here, rules. That whatever rules are in motion or in play at that particular moment are suspended. This is different from suspending the business of the house. This is your first correlation that you have to be very clear of. Business of the house is the proceedings of the house, the parliament of India, say the Rajya Sabha. Okay. The rules, we will discuss what does suspension of rules mean. So what does 267 say first? Any member with the consent of the chairman move that any rule may be suspended in its application to a motion related to the business listed before the council. The rule in question shall be suspended for the time being. Look at it. It's mentioning rule. So the suspension of rules is enforced through Article 267. Now what happens? The opposition wants to come and say discuss a very important issue of say national importance, pressing public importance. Say the Manipur issue or say tomato price rises, whatever, n number of issues. Now what is the ideal method? In the Lok Sabha, if you want to discuss something or ask a question to the government, you have say a uh, Instruments like question R, okay, zero R, special mentions, all of these are a part of, say, the procedure of seeking accountability from the government. Thereafter, you have the bigger power of adjournment motions, okay, wherein you suspend the business of the day and then you discuss a matter of public importance. However, what about Rajya Sabha? Now, your uh, you must be aware that adjournment motion is only available to the Lok Sabha. If you are not, note this important fact down. That adjournment motion is only for the Lok Sabha. Why? Because adjournment motion has an element of censuring the government. That you are criticizing and reprimanding the government, seeking direct accountability, which lies with the Lok Sabha. The Rajya Sabha does not have adjournment motion. So, how do they go ahead and seek accountability from the government? Will they make use of these instruments? And now, off late, what has happened is 
that under art, uh, rule 267, what they seek to do is suspend the business of the house. Now, the chairman of the Rajya Sabha says that, well, if you want to go ahead and talk and seek accountability on a matter of public importance, you do it under article one, uh, rule 176. What is 176? The short duration discussion, not exceeding two and a half hours. Okay. Good morning, Mansu. Good morning, Navneet. Welcome, guys. Okay. Just pay attention for the time being. Okay. So, because, say, adjournment motion is not available to the Rajya Sabha, they seek to seek accountability under Rule 267. But because Rule 267 talks about the suspension of rules, this is not admitted by the chairman, which is why the opposition walks out and then the house gets adjourned, say, till lunch or whatever. Now, the chairman, Chairman Jagdeep Dhankar, the Vice President of India, the ex officio, he says that if you want to go ahead and seek accountability, you seek it under Rule 176, the short duration discussion. Any member desirous of raising discussion on a matter of urgent public importance may give a notice in writing to the Secretary General and this motion shall be supported by at least two other members. So, your learnings first. Rule 267 can be given by an individual member, which means, which is why you have say just 11 o'clock, go ahead and look at it you will have at least 10 to 15 MPs give a notice under this rule. Which means as an individual MP, I don't need the backing of anyone else to go ahead and submit this uh, proposal. But under rule 176, you need at least two more friends who agree with you. Alright, let's go forward. So now rule 176, the short duration discussion. Once the chairman admits the notice, the rule says, he will be in consultation with the leader of the council. Who is the leader of uh, the Rajya Sabha? Can someone let me know in the chat? Let's see. You must be aware of all the short, these names, factual names. So, the VP plus the leader of the council, they will decide together the date on which this discussion will happen. Alright? And thereafter, it will not exceed two and a half hours. In fact, yesterday's demand was for 30 minute discussion. Okay, on the Manipur issue, on, on the ghastly images that we have all at least come to know of that took place in Manipur. So, this was the method, this was what was uh, being sought to be done in the house, seeking accountability, answering, getting the government to answer questions. However, because the rules are not being followed, house is a matter of protocol, house is a matter of rules. Everything needs to follow rules plus precedence. Okay, make the note of these two things, that house runs on these two things guys. Okay. Now, why am I saying precedence here? Rule wise, I have given you the lowdown. Okay. A short duration discussion under rule 176. You can take it immediately after these two decide, the VP plus the leader of the house. And a few hours later, it can take place anytime. That is decided by these two individuals. Good morning, Tanu. Welcome. All right. But there shall be no formal motion or voting unless a short duration discussion. The member who has given shall reply shortly. So, the right of reply is there. Okay. Under a short duration discussion, there is a right of reply. Now, what happens guys? I have given you the rule structure 267 versus 176. Now, the opposition's point of view we should also take into consideration. What they say is that 267 in the Rajya Sabha has been say admitted on matters of urgent public importance in the past. So, you had say between 1990 up until 2014, around 11 times from 1990 up until 2014, around 11 times, in fact 16, this was admitted under 267. So, there have been discussions. However, now what has changed is the previous uh, Rajya Sabha chairman, Venkaya Naidu, the present Rajya Sabha chairman, Jagdeep Dhankar, they say, that well, this is not proper. 267 is to basically suspend a particular rule. If you are to understand it, so suppose a particular house proceeding is to happen, you know. Now, during that proceeding, you realize that a particular rule is impeding, say, further discussion or further progress. In that case, 267 is moved to suspend that particular rule so as to enable the functioning of the house. It does not mean that you go ahead and suspend the house completely to discuss something else. Alright. 
So let's look at this now. This is the opposition's point of view that there is precedence, okay, that this has happened in the past. In fact, the article that I uh, am referring to was written by Derek O'Brien, where he mentions that the last such uh, the last such discussion under 267 was under Hamid Ansari. He was the chair of the house when the house discussed democratization of currency, which is basically demonetization. Okay. So, you see a topic of urgent importance, national importance, it has been taken up by the Rajya Sabha previously. Be clear of the semantics here. All right. Let's go forward. So, now the opposition parties have been mistakenly using 267 as an equivalent to the adjournment motion. Why? Because the Rajya Sabha is not given this privilege. So, to seek accountability from the government, they choose the root of a rule 267. All right. In the case of adjournment motion governed by the rules 56 to 63, the discussion is based on a motion. Okay. So, the house is adjourned for the purpose of discussing a definite matter. And this is to be done by 50 members at least. All right. The rule stipulates not more than one such motion shall be made in the same sitting. Because why? This is an element of censuring the government, which is again only available to the Lok Sabha. Okay. This is the problem here. That misinterpretation of Rule 267 in the Rajya Sabha is essentially say, leading to not the proper functioning of the house as you would expect. Okay. Whereas in Lok Sabha, that problem does not happen. Why? Because again, you already have a mechanism of seeking accountability, getting the government to answer your question. Besides say, the usual ones, question hour, zero hour, special mentions, all of that aside, you do have mechanisms. But in the Rajya Sabha, in the absence of a German motion, the members are trying to seek accountability through something that does not give them or have the say, Rule wise, it is not proper. Precedence wise, yes, it might exist. Clear? All right. So, rule 267, look at this now. As I told you, talking about suspension of rules. So, example, look at this very closely. If a bill is to be introduced, it would be listed. But if a rule is coming in the way, if there is some proper, some, some rule that is hindering discussion or progress on that particular bill or on that particular activity, then you Im employ 267 to suspend that particular rule. You see, the problem is rule versus business. All right. This means particular suspension of a particular clause or a particular object, whereas this means suspension of the proceedings. Two different concepts altogether, which probably the opposition is mixing up or, you know, whatever they be the reasons. All right. So, the adjournment motion is to take up a discussion on a subject of urgent matter. Not just discussion, the adjournment motion has an element of censure to it. Now, that is the privilege of only the Lok Sabha. Because Lok Sabha can bring down a government which the Rajya Sabha cannot. Which is why no adjournment motion in Rajya Sabha. There is no rule in Rajya Sabha which has an element of censure. Make a note of this. Important fact that you should aware, you should be aware of. UPSC will use this line and ask you to identify whether that is correct or not. That there is no there is no such rule in Rajya Sabha which allows them to say seek accountability or censure the government in a direct fashion. You should be absolutely clear, yes, Rajya Sabha has no role to play there. All right. So the opposition always has been using rule 267, which is why Chairman Jagdeep Dhankar has not been admitting them. Clear? This morning, 11 o'clock, go ahead. Have a look at what I told you. The sequence. The Rajya Sabha convenes. Jagdeep Dhankar comes. He goes ahead, gives a small intro, two minutes. Thereafter says, okay, 267 has been given by, say, n number of members. And then he says, I have not admitted any of them. The members get upset. Walk out. House adjourned. This is the flow chart that will follow at 11 a.m. I can assure you. Okay. Have a look at this today. Now, we will look at the questions. Go ahead. This is your first question for the day. You are going, there are total of questions of A to F that we have today. All right, six questions, I believe. Look at the questions, answer them A, B, C, D in the comment box. And if you answer all of the 
above correctly well i can assure you your name will figure in tomorrow's mcq masters not that it's a big deal but if i were a student and if i were given this opportunity i would take it daily why because it helps me learn small memories and something i can recollect and revisit it 10 10 20 years down the line that when i was a student this is how i was preparing apne bachcho ko bhi to kahani sunana hai theek hai so a german motion is an extraordinary device available in both the houses to address matters of urgent public importance correct or incorrect a german motion cannot deal with matters that are sub judice which means being discussed in the court under the purview of the court or related to question of privilege you know what is parliamentary privilege the special uh, rights that are given to say members of the house the mps a german motion in the lok sabha involves an element of censure of the government identify the incorrect statements you will leave an answer for me in the comment box the second question i have for you is this rule 267 can be invoked by a single member of the house rule 176 needs to be backed by at least two mps a german motion needs 50 which of the above are correct this is question b for you this also go ahead and answer for me in the comment box all right so that was your first discussion where we took a comprehensive look on 121267176 in a german motion the article in indian express after this go ahead and look at the article not more than 5 to 10 minutes you will be absolutely clear about this for the rest of your preparation journey all right very important concept one that you can actually go ahead and see in operation today all right that doesn't happen very often where i can tell my students that jo bhai padha raha hu wo do ghante baad hone wala hai theek hai okay so this closes on the 22nd that's tomorrow i believe so the last 36 hours prelims to interview initiative modeled on how we operate here the way i go ahead and say introduce you topics take you to the depth that is required give you the tangible outcomes is a demo video for what happens in the whole course over the whole course of p2i okay so go ahead have a look at the course brochure you'll find it on studyiq.com okay choose the language of your delivery this is one thing that probably students get confused in that english is where you get all the material in english course delivery in english answer writing every all of the feedback everything is in english english is also partly to do with english but a lot of explanation is in hindi and hindi is completely in the hindi language so go ahead choose the language of your preference sign up use this code be alive you get allotted to my batch and we both work together all right so that was your first topic for the day 267176 adjournment motion indian express have a look 11 am sunset tv now the second topic the desiccation tolerant plant varieties very very important topic guys we i i seldom say this but in terms of say the outcomes and the questions that can be formed out of this topic you know i could have spent another 1 hour and solved made 20 mcqs out of this topic such is the depth that you can go into okay so first understand what are desiccation tol uh, tolerant varieties okay plants are able to withstand extreme dehydration lose 95% of their water content and still be able to revive themselves when water is available again you must be aware of say these kind of plants at your home also you must have seen some particular plant varieties that will dry up when no water is given completely but the moment you give them water within say 4 6 10 12 hours different time periods they will again come back to life those are called dt varieties dt plants first things first now what has happened is in our biodiversity hotspot western ghats it has been found that 62 of such tolerant uh, plant species have been discovered discovered by the agrakar uh, research institute the ari which is based in pune okay ari which is based in pune which is under the operation of the department of science and technology whenever you are given such sorts of uh, uh institutions or organizations that are in say research always make sure who is the parent body who is the controlling body where is it located who is the parent body you don't need to remember dg kon hai or ye kon hai that's not necessary you are not appearing for say clerical examinations you need to aware of you need to be aware of say the location the parent controlling body then you will understand 
whether it is an autonomous body or a completely wholly owned subsidiary or what is the nature of the organization. Okay. So, it's the, in Western Ghats, this organization, the Agrakar Research Institute went ahead, did a lot of research. 62 such plant varieties found, which in the absence of water will totally shrivel up. But once you give water, completely back to life, as if nothing had changed. All right. So, this unique ability allows them to survive in harsh, arid environments where the rest would probably perish. The applications, can you figure out, guys? Think from the UPSC, think as a civil servant, that if you are given this information, that here is a plant variety which has this particular uh, quality, this particular ability to say, come back to life if you give them water in spite of, say, not having access to water for a long period of time. Straight away, you will be like, the first application is, we can develop, say, high temperature resistant crop varieties. Can we study these particular uh, plant species and say, figure out that can we have the same thing for say wheat or rice paddy or for, say, for the other uh, food crops? Can we say pick and learn from there and have a model going forward? First things first. All right. DT plants have been studied for their possible applications in agri, particularly in areas with limited water resource. Given that climate change is a reality, the uh, International Meteorological Organization has also said that we are fast. In fact, we have already breached the 1.5 degree centigrade mark. Yes, it's, it's a pre foregone conclusion. If you look at, say, how the environment uh, conversation is building up, it's, it's the COP28, forthcoming COP28 will be a decider. Okay, in so far as what, what can we do because it's looking very bleak right now. So, if you are going to go ahead and live with climate change now, forget averting and, and mitigating and all of that. Those are old words now. The, now, the new buzzword will be living with climate change. You are no, going to need such crop varieties because agriculture will get affected, will be the first one to get affected, in fact. The moment agriculture gets affected, food security gets affected, everything else is a domino after that. All right. So, in tropical regions, they are predominantly occupants of rock outcrops. What are rock outcrops? You must have seen a particular geological formations above the surface of the earth. Okay. These kind of formations. Where the, some part is above the ground, some part is below the ground. They are called rock outcrops. Which is why they also flourish there. Why again? No soil. Lack of say, uh, you need long roots to go ahead and deep into the soil. After the rock outcrop. Which means you will find them there. They are still able to flourish there. Clear? So, of the 62 species that the Agrakar Research Institute has found, 16 are Indian endemic, exclusive to India, and 12 are exclusive to Western Ghat outcrops. Western Ghats must be an important part of your whole preparation, environment preparation at least. Be absolutely aware of everything related to Western Ghats. Okay. So, this is what you are looking at. These kind of plants, the discovery is a game changer. Specifically, when you consider that it is in Western Ghats, one of the higher protected areas in the country, endemic area, world heritage site, biodiversity hotspot, all of that and you find this, which means again all the more reason to go ahead and conserve that area. That's a place of learning for us. Alright, go forward. So, this is what you are looking at guys. Huh? You put a glass of water or some water and look at it, comes back to life. So, this is what a DT plant is. Okay. Remember this image in case you are unable to remember the rest of the theory that I give you. If you remember this image, pictorial representation is important because a huge part of your preparation will be done in fact by the pictorial uh, questions. Okay, I had a student, in fact, just to de deviate for two minutes, I had a student who uh, the question from 2023 uh, prelims this year on cobalt, where is it found? The cobalt question, which was the answer was DRC, the uh, Republic of Congo. He found that answer to that question in a meme, okay, where there was an African kid, okay, who's got a very wry smile on his face and he's saying, yes, I am working hard to mine all the cobalt so that you can run your EV vehicles and claim to be climate sustainable. So, he found that answer in a meme. So, pictorial representation is very important. Always be making sure that you have the idea of the picture. So, research in Western Ghats carried out by the Agharkar Research Institute of Pune. Make a note of this because this has been in the news recently too. 
they have also done some important uh, work uh, of late we had discussed in fact in Kashmir. Can any of you recall what was that particular work that they have done in Kashmir? Anyone else? Did, did, do you guys remember we discussed something on caste plateau also recently a couple of days ago? Did we or did we not? So, they are also working there. So, it is an important uh, institute that you and I both need to be aware of. Monica has a statement, can use in drought prone areas, correct? Genetically modifying crop character, absolutely correct Monica. That is the future application that you are looking at, good, good. So, DT plants can be found in both tropical and temperate regions. Now, the preferred habitats, you need to be aware of this. One is the ferricytes or ferricrates they are called and the next is the basaltic plateaus, the volcanic ones. You will find them both in sedimentary rocks, in volcanic rocks. They are able to flourish in temperate, in tropical. They are able to flourish primarily in rock outcrops, but also in the soil. No problem. Okay. The dominant genus, make a note of this again. Uh, I wouldn't suggest mugging it up. Follow the 555 rule for this, for these kind of factual information. Revisit them, keep revisiting them. You don't need to remember. Okay. Now, how, what is observed? Color changes. Look at this here itself. Huh? Colorless, in fact. Gray color here is what you find. Water is given, green color happens. All right. Curling of leaves. Why does this happen, guys? NCRT level. What is transpiration? NCRT level, guys. You cannot mess this up. Okay. Whenever, say, leaves are uh, dealing with scarcity of water, they, they basically close the stomata. The curling of the leaves happens. So, the leaf is like this. Once the water scarcity happens, it goes inwards. Just like human body, no? When you say uh, are cold, what do you do? Try to conserve your cold temperature. You curl up like this. Same thing with the plants. When they are dehydrated, they curl up. Minimize the uh, loss of water. That is, curling of leaves was observed, color changes was observed. So, the question asks you, uh, which of the following can be observed in DT plants? Number one, say photochromatic or color changes. Number two, curling of leaves. Number three, hardening of stem. Hardening of stem is not there. Clear? Minimize the transpiration. Asha, absolutely, yes, spot on, correct. Good observations. Sawal ye puchega aapse, ki kya change hota hai? Alright? So, you will make sure that these two are the only ones that happen, in fact. Color changes and curling of leaves. The other observations are a lot to do with, say, uh, the changes, the GM change, the genetic changes that happen, okay. But in terms of, say, the physical changes, the physiological changes that you observe, these two are prominent. Now, the future potential, as uh, students in the chat box have been telling me, immense use in developing resistant crop varieties, okay. This is what you are looking at as the future application of DT crop varieties. I hope that's clear, guys. First things first, if you are still un unaware, Read this from the NCRT. T take 10 minutes. Okay. Go ahead. Look at the NCRT book. Look up, look up transpiration. Just read that particular uh, segment today. After the class ends. It will take you 5 to 10 minutes. Not more than that. Your DT plant varieties is also covered. Done for the day. Okay. Next. Let's look at this question, guys. C. Agharkar Research Institute. Which ministry? Department of Science and Tech. Institute of Wood Science and Technology. This is in Bengaluru, by the way. Okay. So, who is the controlling ministry for that? Ministry of Forest Change or Climate Change, is it? The National Institute for Ocean Technology, which is in fact in the news for Matsya 6000. Okay. This is the submersible, our own manned submersible. So, which is the parent ministry, the controlling ministry, Ministry of Earth Sciences? Identify the correctly matched this is question C for you. You will leave an answer for me for this too. Question D now. Western Ghats. You cannot in fact ignore Western Ghats if you are a serious UPSC aspirant. Go to the end to end of Western Ghats. Read everything and anything that you find about it. It's, it's one of the most important places in India. Okay. So, Western Ghats comprise six states of India or is it seven or five? You will tell me. Western Ghats are a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a Biodiversity Hotspot. The Himalayas are older than Western Ghats, are they? Go ahead, look at the geological history of uh, India. And Kas Plateau, which we have discussed two days before, is a part of Western Ghats. 
identify the correctly matched no options because well there is no point you know eventually what will happen is that you pay see the day it goes online is the day that it will do away with options okay i can assure you that if you have seen the cat exam the cat exam initially offline no problems when it went online it introduced something called tita which is type in the option so you were not given options so no all this guesswork abhi to fir bhi aapko option diya jata hai only one pair two pair how many statements are correct the day will come when options will be out of the window so start preparing like this best way okay take options out be relaxed okay so if uh, these two topics were informative for you take a small break quickly like the stream for me my like count keeps decreasing my view count keeps increasing i don't understand how that is happening so ideally i would like both of them to increase please go ahead consider leaving me a like if you learned something for the 267 the 176 the adjournment motion discussion as well as the discussion on dt plans okay i really appreciate it all right so the last question the last topic for the day that we come to the tankai method very important the mains question for today is also based on this all right so let's look at tankai method a 2000 year old ship building technique firstly to do with ship building is your first because upsc's question may be very simple tankai method is related to four options or it could be extremely difficult by say four particular statements identifying asking you to identify the correct one so have a deep look at it 2000 year old ship building technique construction of something called a stitched ship okay stitching of ships how are you going to stitch ships your grandmother might have stitched to a sweater or your mother might have stitched to a cap how are you going to stitch a ship together well exactly what jack sparrow would have done in pirates of the caribbean if you have seen pirates of the caribbean that whole series you will see that in certain uh, movies in certain uh, segments he has got a ship which is made made of wood he has got a ship which is made of wood and is doing absolutely well with the rest of the other developed ships so we don't know if he was using tankai method but for the sake of our understanding tankai method of ship building is stitching wooden planks absolutely the rudimentary method okay you are it's like back to the basics how you would have started building ships all right so you go back to the basics you stitch wooden uh, planks to make a ship by stitching it means no usage of nails or metal okay so no nails or no metal is used and because no metal is used it's completely say sustainable what you are looking at is lesser environmental pollution all right so these are the issues the, these are the good things of it now consider the history tankai method was instrumental in say india getting connected with the other parts of the world at a time when say the technology of ship building was not developed in india this was our method or our uh, our our motive in fact our vehicle of engaging with the outside world okay so thereafter what you see is that when the europeans came the white folk they brought with themselves the technical know how of advanced technical know how of advanced ship building okay and eventually you have ships nowadays you started from wooden planks and now you are looking at say nuclear powered ships so this is the whole journey of ship building okay started from wooden planks today we have come to nuclear powered ships if you have seen say the polar ice breakers okay the polar ice breakers are in fact some of the most powerful ships who are able to break through the ice of say the arctic or the antarctic and go ahead okay so that is powered by a nuclear power plant on its a small nuclear power plant on its uh, 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 particular entity on the ship itself okay so now you have to understand why ship building important for you to consider two things there is a place in india called alang a l a n g alang ship building yard ship breaking yard in fact okay can someone tell me which state has the alang ship breaking yard okay which state has the alang ship breaking yard can someone tell me very quickly in the chat so now this is one of the major ship breaking yards across the whole world 
in fact ships from across the world are sent here for say dismantling and eventually you know it's like the demise of a cruise ship or a huge ship or a liner so they are sent to along now you have also other areas that have come up because again monopoly nahi chalta na so you have along and now other countries are getting into this pakistan has its own ship building yard a ship breaking yard bangladesh has one turkey has one okay uh bulbul Bengaluru is for the Wood Science and Technology Institute. I'm asking about the Along Ship Breaking Yard. Which state has it? Can someone let me know in the chat? Asha says Arunachal Pradesh or Andhra Pradesh. It's not in Andhra or Arunachal either ways. Uh, Rajan is correct. Correct. It's in Gujarat. Along is in Gujarat. In fact, the largest ship breaking yard in the whole world. Okay. So now, why is it important? Ship breaking is a process that has a lot of environmental factors associated to it. that say a lot of uh, hidden pollutants are there within the ship that are exposed once you go ahead and dismantle the ship which is why there is a health concern along for those who are working in the along ship building yard see how this topic is developing now we have started from say the culture we have now discussed say the history the brief history of ship building we have discussed ship breaking and now we are coming to health you also realize that uh, a special provision has been made by the government of gujarat for the health insurance of these individuals okay now this is ship breaking when the ship is in motion it's a source of constant pollution okay say if it's a cruise ship now you and i suppose the 20 odd people who are watching me right now all of us are on a ship say going from india to maldives what happens during the course of the journey you are looking at the ship that is going to uh, have a lot of air pollution discharge into the sea all the gray water and black water that we will generate will be discharged into the sea you are also looking at pollutants from the diesel generators diesel is a certified uh, carcinogenic agent all the fumes that come out you are also looking at say uh, the marine ecosystem getting uh, threatened destroyed so ship building ship breaking and say the cruising of ships is a major source of pollution now consider this in say uh, relation to the aviation sector now aviation sector as we have discussed again another polluting sector but they have the option of going off to sustainable aviation fuel which is say less polluting than say the current ones however in case of ships there is no sustainable aviation fuel what you are looking at is the cleanest method is to have nuclear powered ships now again this is a bone of contention so again if you are going to say minimize uh, the carbon emissions coming out of a ship the second option that you have is a nuclear powered ship or there is no other way how are you going to blend for the length of the distance that a ship travels you require huge amounts of fuel and oil how are you going to do that all right so let's look at the questions now first one black water gray water and ballast water okay what is ballast water guys it is to do with buoyancy remember archimedes he shouted eureka eureka buoyancy that a ship carries water inside its own structure and then releases that water when it re reaches its destination and can take on more load because it requires a certain load no so as to be stable on on the uh, sea so if it is lacking load it carries extra water that is called ballast water now once it reaches the destination suppose it's going from say mumbai to say somalia so it started the ship started from uh, mumbai and it is now going here it has filled ballast water here once it reaches somalia it releases that ballast water into the sea what happens guys can you imagine here now that the water from mumbai huge amount of water suddenly released into the local environment the local surroundings in somalia this water will have different types of say organisms and pathogens and all those pollutants in it suddenly in a completely unknown area marine contamination happens contamination of the water happens ecosystem is completely like you know destroyed affected adversely affected in fact so that is ballast water you have been taught what is black water and gray water we have discussed this 
ब्लैक वाटर क्या होता है जल्दी से बताइए मुझे ग्रे वाटर क्या होता है चैट में बताइए मुझे वेरी क्विकली गाइस ओके लेट्स लुक एट दिस नाउ मार पोल एज द नेम सजेस्ट इट इज टू डू विथ मरीन पॉल्यूशन ओके इट इज टू डू विथ मरीन पॉल्यूशन सो एन इंटरनेशनल कन्वेंशन वॉज साइन इंडिया ऑल्सो दे डिड रेटिफाई आर नॉट यू विल टेल मी बट एन इंटरनेशनल कन्वेंशन मरीन पॉल्यूशन नंबर सेवेंटी थ्री ऑब्लिक सेवेंटी एट इज द प्राइमरी कन्वेंशन फॉर रिड्यूसिंग पॉल्यूटेंट्स एंड पॉल्यूशन फ्रॉम दीज शिप्स ओके so this is correct this i can assure you is correct whether india is a signatory to marpol uh, 73 oblique 78 is something that you will tell me so answer this in the chat box too this is your question number e okay gray is bathing washing water correct asha what about black water we have discussed we have done this extensively and go ahead and look at this the ship breaking yards okay ship breaking yards should be known to all of you the problems in fact if you are wanting to read more on this will obviously besides this go ahead and read about along read about the health issues there read about what the government's initiatives are and also read about uh in terms of say ship pollution the pollution coming from ships read about the primary pollutants you will find sulfur is one of the most commonly accepted in fact the commonly known uh, pollutants that arise out of ships okay so go ahead answer these questions for me once you have answered i would suggest look at the map for 2 minutes spot each of these areas whether they are correctly matched or not you will tell me but spot each of these areas okay deepak is correct black water is human urine waste fecal material all of that is black water gray water is a dish washing face washing a toothbrush all of that is grey water so whether again ships to release that i have told you what is ballast water go ahead and answer the question for me is that clear guys okay and this is the mains question of the day go ahead 200 words is what all i am looking at for you okay 200 words what you need to do is trace a little bit of the marine history of india say how we have developed as a marine force go back in history look at say the cholas cherias pandyas what did they do in terms of say ship building how did they add to this creation of ecosystem that i always talk about of say ship building in india today we have an ecosystem for ship breaking we did have an ecosystem for ship building also go ahead and have a look at that grey water be produced by domestic use absolutely rajan when you brush in the morning that is grey water okay then uh, when uh, you wash your dishes after eating your food that is again grey water so a house produces both black water and grey water all right so go ahead and answer this question for me how did the tankai method augment india's efforts in integrating with the world elaborate on the significance of its revival that the indian navy and the ministry of culture coming together to uh, revive this ancient ship building technique what's the motivation go ahead and have a look all right Uh, and leave the answer for me in fact uh, this is my email id i always mention this in the class okay bhuvan.jha@studyiq.com leave an answer for me as i have mentioned in my telegram channel today morning to some previous uh, questions i am still to answer uh, i had a busy day yesterday but i will be making sure that i answer all of those emails pending emails before uh, noon today go ahead and answer this and i can assure you that this will help your answer writing you know answer writing is a skill guys no matter what anyone says i have i have seen many fancy teachers saying oh you should start answer writing later and this and that to each their own my way is answer writing is a skill that you ought to learn it's like public speaking you can't learn it overnight it takes time it's a, it's a, it's an uh, in, uh, compounding uh, value of that whole effort has to be observed theek hai to iska answer mujhe bhejiyega aap log okay guys with that we come to the end go ahead and like the stream it's three very important topics that we have done today and you will see that over the course of the week there is not even a single important piece of news that we have say missed out so far every important article is done so the topical approach works you don't need to be a clerical staff and look at say articles and have no outcomes look at uh, articles from a topical view point know the topic you will know the article focus on the topic guys this is the right approach
Okay. In my all my limited experience, that's the one thing that I want to leave you with. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Please go ahead. Any questions on, on the three topics that we have done today? Make sure that you tune in at 11 a.m. for the house proceedings. Look at the Rajya Sabha house proceedings. Open the note by the side of you when you're looking at the Rajya Sabha house proceedings and you will know exactly what we have discussed today. Okay. It will stay in your mind because you can see it once you can see it not Okay. Any questions for me, I'd be happy to take them on, guys. Anything. We have around five more minutes before I take your leave. Thank you, Monica. You are most kind. And in fact, keep answering the questions. We have uh, A to F questions today. Six questions is what I've left you for. Please answer them in the comment box. You know, all the people who are watching this later also, go ahead, answer this. You know, I can assure you it will be of benefit to you. You will learn. You will have a learning outcome out of the, say, 45 minutes that you're putting with me early morning. All right. Rajan, I'm so glad to hear that. That is what I aspire. Uh, and, and I'm genuinely thankful to you, Rajan. Thank you for that statement. In fact, you made my day now. Uh, so the whole point of this, guys, is that I serve your interests, you know. And, and I give you information that you're going to use in your preparation. This, this is, uh, there is no self involved here. It's all uh, for the benefit of my students. And so any feedback that you have for me, I'd appreciate that too. Okay. It will help me. If there's something you didn't like, let me know. I'll try and improve on that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. And I hope you consider answering the MCQs as well as sending me the answer for the mains question. I look forward to reading your answers. Okay. Take care, everyone. Till I see you tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. In another, the last, in fact, class of this week on uh, the Editorial Edge. Bye.